Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for a new video. Uh, and if you're new here, my name is Distill Noise. I make minimal house music and videos on YouTube. So if you're interested in this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel to stay updated on the next videos. Finally, I finished renovating my room. So turning it from a bedroom to a an actual studio and in this video I'd like to run you through the process from painting the walls to changing the furniture to building the acoustic panels uh, which are all homemade and um, running some measurements. I'm not a filmmaker so I didn't film to do like a one of those very good uh, making of videos but uh, I will try to explain all the different stages and making it also a little bit entertaining. Uh, so let's get it started. So today I am emptying my room. So the first thing that I did was painting the walls. I was tired of that ugly yellow color. Also, it was a pain in the ass for setting the white balance for my videos. And last but not least, this room is on an attic, so the windows are quite small, it's not so bright. And I thought that painting the walls uh, white would have, would have made the, the room brighter. So that's what I did. Yo, looking clean and quite reverberant need to work on that then i wanted to run some acoustical measurements of the reverberation time since my job is being an acoustic consultant i have this uh, instrument which is an acoustic analyzer and it's made for measuring environmental noise but also for running uh, building acoustics measurements so it has a software to evaluate to calculate uh, reverberation time the problem with the reverberation time software is that it it's made for building acoustic uh, assessments uh, and insulation assessment so it's not made for uh, music rooms and so the reverberation time is uh, evaluated just between 100 Hertz and 3500 Hertz and so that's not the best for music because you want to know also below 100 and above 3500 but you know it was just to to have an idea of where my room is at. I did it with uh, my uh, wardrobe open and closed just to see the difference because clothes inside make a huge, a huge dis difference. So let's see together the graphs of the reverberation time. On the left side, I have the case with the doors closed of the closet. So there is no help from the closes inside the closet. And as you can see from 250 Hertz, the reverberation time is around 0 0.8, 0 0.7, which is not so bad, it's not above one second, but still it's not ideal. Uh, imagine that uh, for a control room, the perfect uh, reverberation time is around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seconds. So we're far from the level, from the value. Also below 250, we start having problems. The reverberation time goes up and that's because it's not easy to control frequencies below that frequency below 250 even when your room is treated if you don't treat it for bass frequencies you'll always have a higher reverberation time for lower frequencies and this is uh, at 100 Hertz imagine below 100 Hertz they are even higher on the right side I have the case the case we open close it so where the close in the closet uh, have an influence on the reverberation time and in fact you can see that the reverberation time goes below 0.6 it's around 0.5 for most of the frequencies apart from 100 to 200 so that that's very interesting it has a big influence and still now that I have my room treated with acoustic panels uh, sometimes when I mix I open the closet in order to 
lower down even further my reverberation time. I still have to run measurements with the panels, with the acoustic panels, and I'll do it today before uh, as I'm doing this video. Then it was time to go at IKEA and buy some new furniture, for example, the sofa that you can see here, uh, uh, an armchair or whatever it's called, the carpet for the room, which also is helping with controlling the reverberation time. Also, this sofa is very helping with controlling the reverberation time because it's a huge absorbing piece of stuff and and so I, I i could hear a big improvement after i built it now let's talk about how i built my panels um, i didn't film very much about the um, the process and my bad for that but so as a material for the absorbing panels i uh, chose uh, polyester fiber over rock wool uh, because uh, polyester is a non-toxic material and also it has great acoustical performances and since I spend most of the time of my life in this room I preferred to have a healthier material. Panels comes with a 60 by 120 centimeters uh, format and they are 10 centimeters thick I uh, think that this thickness is the minimum that you want to have to have performing panels. I also bought five centimeters panels, but I don't know why I did it. I immediately regretted it and most of them I paired them. So they, they were, they were uh, 10 centimeters. Then I built the frames. They are made of plywood boards, 1.5 centimeters thick. Um, I went to a wood worker to get the boards cut and then I assembled them myself. Oh, good morning. So day two of building the panels. So basically these are for the biggest panels, the, the thickest, and these are 11. 0.5 centimeters the panels are 10 centimeters so I have this on the back which is one centimeter and half which will create the panel will stop here I will put inside here so on the back I will have a one centimeter and half of air gap and that should improve the uh, absorption rate a little bit. Last but not least, the fabric. I bought acoustic fabric. Uh, what is acoustic fabric? Basically is a fabric that has the property of acoustical transparency. So the sound can cut through the fabric and go inside the panels. And that's how the fabric looks. If we take a close look, as you can see, the thread is quite thick and so there are holes that uh, allows sound to get inside the polyester. I built in total uh, 12 panels, uh, 8 of these are 10 centimeters wide, 2 of these are 5 centimeters wide, so let's take a look. So let's start from here, so here I have uh, the early reflection panel which is 5 centimeters, there I have the first base, it's called base strap which is 10 centimeters, I have to lift it up to be the same height of this. These are 10 centimeters. Other base trap, this is a standing one. So I built the legs very, very, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not the best thing that, that I could do. It's not the most beautiful to see, but it's working. Here I have the other panel for early fraction, five centimeters. Here I have the cloud. As soon as I mounted it, I heard immediately a big difference from the listening position because it stops the reflections from your table to the ceiling. And not only, it also uh, works very good on the low frequency boominess of the room because it absorbs a little bit of this, the standing wave that is created between floor and ceiling. So that's that's really good. Now back on the other side. So two panels over there to avoid a flutter echo between the two walls of the room. And here another one that I had to put horizontally because I didn't have enough space. Um, sofa is another big absorber and also this 
uh, chair and also the carpet helps. Okay, now that the room is finished, I uh, want to run a measurement, a new measurement of the reverberation time. Uh, usually what you do is measuring around the room with the microphone moving it around the room and bursting the balloons around the room. But in this case, I want to run the measurement just in the listening position. That's because for the acousticians that are following this channel, you know guys that in a reverberant room, it doesn't matter that much where you run the measurement because every place is basically behaving, behaving in the same way. But in this case, I think that the cloud and the listening position are super closed and so for many frequencies this distance is lower than the critical distance and so there's actually an impact on the listening position and the, the reverberation time that I have here is probably different from the time that I have in this position. So let's, let's, let's do this measurement guys because I think nobody cares about this, this nerdy stuff. Hey guys, so let's now take a look at the measurement results. So uh, on this side, I have the measurements before and after the treatment with a closed closet. So if you remember with a closed closet, I had uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 seconds above 250 Hertz. While post treatment, so with the acoustic panels installed, the results are amazing because above 250, I have a reverberation time which is below 0 0.3 seconds. So we are definitely into the optimal range of uh, reverberation time. Also, as I told you, I don't have the measurements above 3500 Hertz, but it makes sense to think that the trend will stay the same or even lower. Now let's talk about the lower frequencies. We had a big improvement because we moved from one second at 100 Hertz to 0 0.4, which is a great improvement but the trend is is increasing so i expect that at even lower frequencies the reverberation time would have been higher if i had the possibility to measure it and also i can hear it by ear if i run a sine wave through my speakers and then i stop it i can hear that it has a longer tail Let's take a look now with at the case with the open closet, we had already good values before the treatment. Now with the treatment, with the panels, uh, values are even better. So 0 0.2 for every frequency, any frequency above 250, while below 250, we didn't get much improvement compared to the closed closet. Now, why I keep having problems in the lower frequencies, even though I get some improvement? Because those panels that you see there in the corner aren't actually bass traps. They are simple panels, 10 centimeters thick, put in the corners. If you want to have a noticeable improvement, uh, improvement on the lower frequencies, you could try with bigger, pan thicker panels, but you need to go way thicker, like double or three times that thickness, or you need to study real bass traps, real absorbing panels, which are tuned on the frequency that creates problems to you. So I couldn't run uh, sign sweep measurement because I don't have the equipment to do it. But if you do that, you can really understand which are the frequencies that in your listening position really create problems because of the modes of the room, standing ways between the floor and the floor and the ceiling or the uh, the walls. And so that would be cool to do with uh, Sonarworks. I'd be happy to try out the software and make a video about it uh, because that could solve the problem. You know, treatment is important, but Sonarworks could, could also help because it, it attenuates those frequencies which are actually announced by the room. And this happens always on the lower frequencies. So if you don't have the possibility of having real bass traps, maybe Sonarworks works can help. Okay guys, so as you could see, uh, these kind of topics, acoustics topics are very interesting to me. So that's why 
I like to talk about it and that's why I run my all my analysis. I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you found some help, some ideas for improving your room acoustics or just to renovate your studio if you need some inspiration. Uh, this studio is not perfect. It still has a lot of problems, acoustic problems mainly because of the fact that it's not symmetrical the, because of the fact that I have a wardrobe on one side and uh, windows on the other but you know we, we just make music for fun we I don't have to mix Dua Lipa inside here so I think I can get along with this studio so if you like the video give it a like subscribe to the channel if you didn't yet and I'll see you in the next one cheers guys bye bye